please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. Here's a used motorcycle that I just purchased. Stay away from me is working and the main brake light works. Let's use the front. So all our lights work, so that's good. So on the light and sound check, horn coming up. Okay, that works. So we know now if we're buying this, we can ride it away at this point because all the lights work. It doesn't mean the brakes work. Now that piece of the review is done, am I just going to jump on this and go ride it and go woo? No. Here's a preview. Ergonomics. What am I faced with? What challenges have I got? What shortcomings do I need to maybe find solutions to? So, first thing, shift is bent. I can straighten that out. That's not a problem. Question is, is it going to fit my foot? God, you love center stance. So in the seating position, my thigh matches pretty close the angle of the tank here, and my knees are not down and away. I ride prob I'm going to probably sit like that because I do ride on the balls of my feet. That's fine. Now, as far as the shifter goes, just for my foot size, that's where I want the peg, my foot on the peg. Now I can't get to the shifter. And is that because it's bent? Yes, it is. So the fact that the shift is bent in is an issue. It's also on my big toenail, and that is no bueno. So when that's bent straight, it might actually be in the right position so that I can naturally shift. The other part is, it's way too high. Look at the angle of my foot. It's way less than 90 degrees. I will prefer the shifter at the top of the stroke to be there, and it's not, it's up here. So I've got to change that shift rod. Yep, shift rod. So we've got to pull that off, straighten that all out, and then change the shift rod to put the shifter down because that's not going to work for me at all. Brake pedal, it, brake pedal is too high as well. So on this side, if I want my foot here, then I have to do this and take my foot off completely to get to the brake pedal and use it. So that's not good. So we've got to look at what is adjustable on that brake pedal back here, hidden behind that panel. So somewhere back there, because there's a master cylinder, hopefully there's an adjuster behind that panel to drop that brake lever down. Now we get a lot of questions as well on how do I know I've got the right bars and everything's where I need it to be. So there we go, that's perfect. One very simple thing to do, close your eyes. When you close your eyes, just put, don't reach for the grips, put your fists where you want them. So because of my natural offset, because of my broken shoulder and scoliosis, you can see my hands are in two completely different positions, which is why I've got to have cruise control so I can relax my shoulder. Now, there's the position, Dave, if you get my back, of where I will be. So a lot of hollowed out spine here, so a lot of pressure on my hip. And if I move back and relax my spine, and I get to there where I want to be, that's more comfortable. So you can see how far back I need the handlebar. But you can also see there's three bolts in here. There's not a damn thing I can do with that handlebar. I can't bring it back. I can't do anything with it. There's nothing I can do. There's no way of offsetting. I am stuck with that handlebar. <clears throat> so unless I can go and find a solution here with a replacement bar, maybe the handle itself or the upright has an adjustment in it, forwards and backwards, so you can bring everything to you away from you. So I've got some research to do on handlebars. You get old, you get asymmetric, and your playful youth catches up with you physically. Massive difference here to there. So adjustable and adjustable. The other part is if I want my hands square, look at the line of my fist compared to the handlebar itself. So again, I'd need the bar to come back to me this way and come straight across. So don't know if I'll have to go find a machinist and fabricator and buy some billet. That will be so expensive. Ugh. 
but we'll see. So we do what we all do, anchor with our thumb, put our hand on top to get everything straight. So if we look at this, my hand is high. The gap, the reach is perfect, but this is too high because I have to go back to go forward. So let's see if it's adjustable or pinned. And then if it's adjustable, how much room do we have? So will it go up or down? Yes, it will. Okay, so we want everything straight. That's too low, because now my fingers drop way below my hand. So we can pull it up. A little more. That's better. Yep, that's a lot better. So we'll settle on that for now. Boy. When moving this around, if I pull it up, everything straightens up. So obviously, electrical cables out of the way, throttle cables are out, whatever that is. Oh, that goes up to the throttle housing itself, so that's the heated grip cable. Now the other part is if I go down, the brake line's going to get close to our electrical, but it's also going to stress here. So it's pulling down on the brake cable, the brake line itself. So as I go lower, it puts more stress on it. So there's a, a part here where we can only go so far. There's no physical interference because that electrical cable's got plenty of play in it. Yep, not a problem. So that will be about as low as I can go. So obviously nowhere near where it's supposed to be for my finger. But in terms of angle with my forearm, that's dead on. Yep, that's perfect. So we need to hold that there, reverse the ratchet. Because what we don't want to do is accelerate into a braking situation. So if this gap is too narrow, I can't come forward. So at this point, we are on number six. Let's see what number one gives us. If in doubt, go big. Number one. Oh, hello. Now to me, that's just a little too far because if I want to actually grab it, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna cheat, which isn't a bad thing because I'm decelerating and making sure the throttle's off. But to me, that's too far. So let's try number two. That's a sizable kickback. That's much better. Yeah, so angle's correct on both sides. Distances are set per hand. Ergonomically, there's the review of the concourse. And let's see, long term, what I've got to spend. I've got to figure out where my settings are first so I understand what I've got. What Peter did, whether it's stock or not, who knows? It doesn't matter, it's my bike now. At the bottom of the fork, it is blank. So we have no compression adjustment whatsoever. From the travel being used when ridden, it's a lot. So the first thing we've got to understand is, all right, if that's always dirty down there, is that actually bottom out? A Little bit more research to do, rear shock and handlebars now, and we'll see what we figure out. We gotta answer the phone. Catch the full video at DaveMossTuning.com.